Welcome to the Sigma Delta Chi Awards event. I'm Patty Newberry, President of the Society of Professional Journalists. And I'm Erwin Gratz, President of the Society of Professional Journalists Foundation. We're here to recognize the best among the nation's print, television, radio, and online reporting during the past year. The Sigma Delta Chi Awards honor work published or broadcast from January 1 to December 31, 2019. The awards represent numerous categories, including breaking news, investigative reporting, features, documentaries, editorials, and photography, among others. They also honor individuals and news outlets for working to improve their communities through public service journalism. Sigma Delta Chi was created as a fraternity in 1909. It grew over the years to become today's Society of Professional Journalists. We're the nation's most broad-based journalism organization dedicated to defending and celebrating the First Amendment guarantee of a free press and, like our forebears, encouraging the highest standards of ethical behavior. We honor our heritage by retaining the original Greek letters in the awards we're about to make. The Society works to improve and protect journalism. We are a national organization, and our chapters provide enhanced training for students as well as mid-career journalists. We advocate for journalists across the country who remain dedicated to covering their communities, even in the current pandemic and ongoing protests. Congratulations to all of this year's winners who are being honored today and who have demonstrated excellence in journalism. Before we begin the awards presentation to celebrate some of 2019's best reporting, I'd like to introduce our host, Abby Phillip, who serves as CNN's political correspondent covering the 2020 presidential election. Abby joined CNN in 2017 to cover the Trump administration and served as White House correspondent through 2019. Philip previously worked at the Washington Post as a national political reporter and general assignment reporter. She's also worked at ABC News and Politico. Please join me in welcoming Abby, who will say a few words before our awards presentation. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. I'm Abby Philip with CNN. This has been an extraordinary year for the entire nation, but also for journalism, as evidenced by how I'm greeting you all today. But it's really times like this that clarify the absolutely essential nature of what we do in this profession. In addition to the pressures everyone in this country is facing, social distancing, concerns about our own health and that of our families, we have to still go out and tell the story. In fact, this is the story of our time, but I should probably say these are the stories of our time. Many of us are simultaneously covering the impact of this awful disease, COVID-19, uh, the lives that have been lost, the successes and failures of our government. But we are also covering massive, unprecedented protests against police brutality and racism. And all of this is happening in an election year, a presidential election year. All across the country, there are stories that are unfolding every day and being told in more ways than ever before. And I am in awe of you, my colleagues, for the work that you do to shine light on the human experience and hold our institutions accountable. Yes, so much of what we are experiencing as a country is extraordinary because it is big and national, but it does start at home in towns and in cities all across the country. They start with communities and they start with individual people who are the sparks of movements that spread nationwide. That's why I'm especially uh, wanting to thank and congratulate and encourage our entrants and awardees from local and regional newspapers and websites radio and television stations, your work is the lifeblood of journalism in America. We need you and we are grateful for the work that you do every single day. I want to urge all of us as we gird ourselves for the months and the years to come, whatever they may hold, to recognize that you are not only writing the history of this nation, but you're also writing the history of journalism itself, the history of this profession. I often think about the journalists who bravely covered the most difficult stories 
of our time, of our nation's history, the civil rights movement, the Vietnam War, uh, you know, the Iraq invasion. And it really does take bravery. But I also think about the journalists uh, on the front lines of these protests in the last few weeks in Minneapolis and even in Lafayette Square in Washington, D.C., who told the story in the midst of clouds of tear gas and shielded themselves from rubber bullets. That takes bravery. It takes bravery to also say that even in the face of lies from the officials sworn to protect us, that we saw what we saw and we experienced what we experienced and we took what we saw and we experienced and reported it to the world. So with that, I just wanna say congratulations again to all of the winners. And I hope that soon we'll be able to be together again in person. For deadline reporting, daily circulation of 1 to 100,000, the winner is the staff of the Las Vegas Review Journal for Alpine Motel Fire. The work provided readers with details about an early morning fire in a dilapidated downtown apartment complex that left six people dead. For deadline reporting, 100,001 plus. The Washington Post is the winner for their work, El Paso Dayton Shooting that provided coverage of nearly concurrent mass shootings while reaching readers on multiple platforms. For breaking news photography, Tom Fox from the Dallas Morning News is this year's winner for his entry, Police Thwart Attack. Fox risked his life to capture photos of a gunman opening fire with a semi-automatic rifle on a Dallas courthouse last June. In the radio breaking news reporting market, 1 to 100, Westwood One News is this year's winner for mass shootings in El Paso and Dayton for its coverage of both incidents that left more than 29 people dead. In radio breaking news reporting in markets of 101 plus, Lance Orozco from KCLU AM FM is the winner for Ventura County Firestorms in California which resulted in the closure of several major highways and forced more than 15,000 evacuations. For television breaking news coverage network, the winner is NBC News specials for Notre Dame Fire and its coverage of the massive blaze that engulfed the prestigious Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris. Television breaking news coverage for small market stations, 51 plus market. The winners are the staff of KTUU in Anchorage, Alaska for brush fire sparks putting Anchorage on high alert. The station provided coverage of a 25-acre blaze that sparked the heart of Alaska's largest and most populated city. For digital deadline reporting affiliated, the staff of the Los Angeles Times is the winner for the entry Death Off the Santa Barbara Coast. Their work centered on California's worst modern maritime disaster involving a diving boat that caught fire and killed 34 people trapped below deck. For digital deadline reporting, independent, Ryan Lenora Brown from the Christian Science Monitor is the winner for her story, In Historic Shift, Botswana Declares Homosexuality is Not a Crime, that focused on a court decision overturning a ban. In newspaper non-deadline reporting daily circulation 100,001 plus, Ashley Lutheran and Angela Peterson from the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel are the winners for Cycles of Violence. The work provided readers with a look at Milwaukee's perpetual culture of violence and the toll a lack of justice takes on the community most affected by it. In the 1-100,000 category, Josh Swigert and Chris Stewart from the Dayton Daily News are this year's winners for Walking the Path of the Storm, in which they investigated issues they found along the way following Memorial Day tornadoes. For non-daily publication, this year's winner is Jerry Ianelli from the Miami New Times for Despite Common Belief, Floridians Can't Always Get a Free Public Defender. 
The story centered on two provisions in Florida law creating massive roadblocks that discourage low-income defendants from obtaining what most Americans assume to be basic, constitutionally protected legal help. For Washington Correspondents, Todd Gilman from the Dallas Morning News is this year's winner for his work covering issues important to Texas. In Foreign Correspondents, Kate Linthicum from the Los Angeles Times is the winner for Mexico's Homicide Crisis. The series investigated the roots of Mexico's homicide epidemic and the failures of the U.S.-backed war on drug cartels. In magazine writing national circulation, the winner is Andy Greenberg from Wired for The Untold Story of the 2018 Olympic Cyber Attack, the most deceptive hack in history. Greenberg detailed how digital detectives unraveled the mystery of the Olympic destroyer and the identity of the Kremlin's most dangerous hackers. For regional local circulation, the winner is Abigail Pesta from Notre Dame Magazine for her story, Life After Death in Parkland. The story provided readers with a rare, deeply personal look into the changing life of a family in the year after the school shooting in Parkland, Florida. For informational graphics, Mandy Kai and Stacy Fernandez from the Texas Tribune are the winners for Tracking Mass Shootings and More in Texas. The result was a comprehensive timeline combining 10 years of state-level poll results, Texas mass shooting incidents, and significant related actions taken by Texas lawmakers. In the larger informational graphics newspaper circulation category, the winner is the infographics team at the South China Morning Post for Hong Kong Protests, the full story in infographics that shed light on mass demonstrations that veered between peaceful rallies and brutal violence. For digital non-deadline reporting affiliated, the winners are Suzanne Rust, Carolyn Cole, and Ali Raj from the Los Angeles Times for American Fallout, the Marshall Islands. The reporters found seas rise with climate change, the United States will soon be forced to confront the toxic nuclear legacy it buried and forgot in the Marshall Islands. In the independent category, the winners are Mark Silver, Julia Gunther, and Rebecca Davis from NPR for No Sex for Fish, which focused on women fishmongers in villages in Kenya fighting back against the practice of having to trade sex for fish. In digital video, the winner is the staff at Trib Total Media for Tree of Life, One Year Later, that looked back at the synagogue shooting, the largest anti-Semitic attack in U.S. history. For data visualization, this year's winner is Casey Miller from the Los Angeles Times for California Wildfires Map, that provides readers with up-to-date coverage of fire perimeters, hotspots, and evacuation zones in California. In immersion journalism, John Woodrow Cox and Wesley Alsbrook from the Washington Post are the winners for their entry, 12 Seconds of Gunfire, that followed a first grader after a teenager opened fire on her school playground. For specialized journalism site, Emily Casey from the Marshall Project in partnership with The Guardian is the winner for Detained, an immersive feature that vividly details how America's immigrant detention system grew to be the largest in the world creating a multi-billion dollar industry. In newspaper investigative reporting, daily circulation, 100,001 plus, the winner is the staff at Newsday for Long Island Divided, which found evidence of widespread and unequal treatment of minority potential home buyers and minority communities on Long Island. In the 1 to 100,000 daily circulation category, the winners for newspaper investigative reporting are Ames Alexander, Gavin Off, David Rayner, and John Simmons at the Charlotte Observer for their work dismissed. The reporters revealed that prosecutors in Mecklenburg County, North Carolina, dismiss seven of every 10 gun charges, and many who avoid punishment go on to be arrested for more serious crimes, including murder. In the non-daily publication category, the winner is Brittany Seamus from the Miami New Times for Death Sentence, a Miami-based jail healthcare company profits while patients die. 
Seamus's reporting found that the families of inmates who have suffered under Armour Correctional's care say the Miami Healthcare Company has shown blatant disregard for the well-being of those it receives taxpayers' dollars to help. For magazine investigative reporting, national circulation, the winner is Seth Fried Wessler from Type Investigations in partnership with Mother Jones for Inside the U.S. Marshal's Secretive Deadly Detention Empire. Wessler's reporting found that although the U.S. Marshals are supposed to safeguard pretrial detainees, records show that hundreds died in recent years while in their custody. In the regional local circulation category, Neil Swidey from the Boston Globe is the winner for the madness of college sports. His story focused on the college sports system being broken, but questioned if we had the guts to fix it. In radio investigative reporting, market 1 to 100, the winners are Nate Halverson, Aix Grisken Daraja, Anayansi Diaz Cortez, and Taki Talonidis from the Center for Investigative Reporting for Harpooned by Facebook. Their reporting revealed that Facebook intentionally duped children out of hundreds or even thousands of dollars. In radio investigative reporting, market 101 plus, the winners are Aviva Oaks and Haberman and Kira Haas from KBIAFM in Columbia, Missouri. For thousands, call Missouri's adult abuse hotline, but only some get through. Their reporting found that in 2018, Missouri's hotline for reports about abuse of elderly adults, as well as abuse of residents with disabilities, answered only half of its calls. In television investigative reporting, Network Syndication, the staff at CBS News are this year's winners for Billion Dollar Medicare Fraud Exposure that focused on unscrupulous doctors and had a massive Medicare fraud preying on seniors' cancer fears. In the large market category for television investigative reporting, the winners are Chris Vanderveen, Corky Shaw, and Chris Hansen from KUSA-TV in Denver for A Fertility Doctor's Secret Exposed. Their work ultimately shed light upon a dark secret that had quietly festered in the valleys and mountains of western Colorado for decades. In the small market category, Charlie Specht, Jeff Wick, and Pat Merritt from WKBW-TV in Buffalo, New York, are this year's winners for The Malone Recordings, the tapes that brought down a bishop. The 22-month investigation of the Catholic Diocese of Buffalo revealed ongoing cover-ups of sexual abuse and led to state and federal investigations of the diocese and the bishop's resignation. In digital investigative reporting, affiliated, the winners are Jennifer Smith Richards, Jody S. Cohen, and Lakidra Chavez from the Chicago Tribune and ProPublica Illinois for The Quiet Rooms which exposed harmful overuse and misuse of seclusion and physical restraints in public schools across Illinois. In the independent category, Jennifer Goland and Melissa Lewis from the Center for Investigative Reporting are the winners for Caregivers and Takers that exposed pervasive wage theft and labor abuses in the senior home care industry and ultimately prompted state and federal action. We'd also like to recognize the winner of SPJ's MOE Award, the top student journalism award in the annual Mark of Excellence competition. This year's recipient, chosen from more than 3,100 entries, is the staff at USC Annenberg for their immersion journalism entry, Homeless Realities. Students worked with members of the Los Angeles homeless community to tell powerful, immersive stories using emerging technologies that included drones, 360 video, augmented reality, and photogrammetry. And now we would like to recognize this year's winner of the New America Award. This honors journalism that sheds light on important issues of immigrant or ethnic communities in the United States. This year's winner is Jose A. Del Real for his reporting with the New York Times on the series Brown Water for Brown People, California's Overlooked Drinking Water Crisis. The series examined how failing water infrastructure 
and ineffective state regulations have collided to create a public health disaster in California. On behalf of SPJ, we congratulate Mr. Del Real for his work. In the Newspaper Daily Circulation 100,001 Plus category, Nestor Ramos from the Boston Globe is the winner for At the Edge of a Warming World, a riveting, visually stunning multimedia narrative that takes readers on a troubling summer journey to a storied place and makes climate change personal. In the Daily Circulation 1 100,000 category, the winners are Tony Bartelm and Glenn Smith from the Post and Courier for Our Secret Delta a deep dive into the threatened Santee River Delta system, one of the largest estuaries on the East Coast. In the non-daily publication category, the winner is Candace Y.A. Montague from Washington City Paper for Life After Death. Parents of homicide victims reflect on open wounds that also provided a look at the city dealing with a shortage of services as homicides continue to rise in Washington, D.C. For feature photography with daily circulation 100,001 plus, the winner is Rodrigo Abd from the Associated Press for Venezuela on the Edge, a series of images chronicling a collapsing society in Venezuela and their struggles. In the daily circulation 1 to 100,000 category, Carrie Angel Luke from the Lake County News Sun is this year's winner for Lake County Fair Ends Run Sunday after five days of pigs, pups, and performances that provided readers with a visual perspective of the fair. In sports photography with newspaper circulation 100,001 plus, Wally Scully from the Los Angeles Times is this year's winner for After the Fire, Back on the Field in Paradise that chronicles the comeback of a football team that mirrored the comeback of a community. In radio feature reporting market 1 to 100, the winners are Gabrielle Emanuel and Sean Kokorin of WGBH Radio for The Long Journey North, The Forgotten Story of the Reverse Freedom Rides of 1962. Listeners learned that segregationists retaliated for the Freedom Rides by tricking black people into boarding buses headed north with the promise of jobs and a better life. But in reality, there were no jobs, and they soon realized the northern cities were not expecting or prepared for their arrival. In Market 101 Plus, the winners are Rob Stein, Joe Neal, and Jane Greenhouge from NPR for Victoria Gray's Journey, a culmination of exclusive coverage of the first patient with a genetic disease to get treated in the United States with a revolutionary gene editing technique. In TV Feature Reporting Network, the staff at ABC News is the winner for Mexico, The Disappeared, which focused on mothers searching for their lost children. For TV feature reporting, Large Market Station, the winner is Peter Rosen from KSL-TV in Salt Lake City, Utah, for his ongoing series involving profiles of individuals with unique stories. In TV feature reporting, Small Market Station, the winner is Blake Essig from KTUU in Anchorage, Alaska for New Talks Sprint Against Climate Change. Essig's reporting found that the Yupik people who have long called New Talk home, are now the first Americans forced to relocate their entire community as a result of climate change. For the podcast category, the winner is Paige St. John from the Los Angeles Times, who worked in partnership with Wondery for Man in the Window. It examines the arrest in one of California's most terrifying serial murders, which provides a platform to investigate the cost of societal attitudes toward rape and trauma. In radio documentaries, 1 to 100 market, the winners are Jennifer Golan, Anianse Diaz-Cortez, and Melissa Lewis from Reveal, from the Center for Investigative Reporting and PRX staff for The Unpaid Cost of Elder Care. The work exposed pervasive exploitation in the senior care home industry, with many workers paid $2 an hour for 24-hour shifts, while operators made millions. In the 101 plus market category for radio documentaries, the winners are Christopher Eusted, Madison Conte, 
Janet Said, and Ryan Fameliner from KBIA-FM in Columbia, Missouri for Show Me the State, The Gay Purge. Their work founded in the 1940s and 50s, designated police officers and university administrators were on the lookout for gay students and faculty at the University of Missouri. In TV Documentaries Network, the staff of NBC News are the winners for American Betrayal, the documentary centered on President Donald Trump's decision to withdraw U.S. forces from northern Syria and how a single phone call left a U.S. ally, the Kurds of Syria, to their fate at the hands of a Turkish military offensive. In the Large Market Station division, this year's winners are Tom Lydon, Brad Swagger, John Michael, and Tyler Ryan at KMSP-TV in Minneapolis for The Last Harvest that explored a crisis for small farmers. In the Small Market Division of Television Documentaries, the winners are the staff of KTUU in Anchorage, Alaska for Climate Changed, which provided a detailed look of the state on the forefront of climate change experiencing record-setting warm temperatures and melting glaciers to rapidly eroding coastlines. In editorial writing with daily circulation of 100,001 plus, Tom McNamee from the Chicago Sun-Times is the winner for four editorials pushing back against clout and corruption in Chicago. In the 1 to 100,000 non-daily publication editorial writing category, the winner is Melissa Hale Spencer from the Altamont Enterprise for Ignoring Child Victims is Easy, Absorbing Truth is Hard. In the editorial cartooning category with newspaper circulation 100,001 plus, Clay Bennett from the Chattanooga Times Free Press was chosen as the winner for his collection of five cartoons. In editorial cartooning, newspaper circulation 1 to 100,000, the winner is Alexander Hunter from the Washington Times for his work published in 2019. For general column writing with daily circulation 100,001 plus, Steve Lopez from the Los Angeles Times is the winner for The Homelessness Crisis in LA, in which readers responded in droves with gratitude and occasional censure. In the daily circulation 1 to 100,000 category, the winner is Nate Monroe from the Florida Times Union for the attempted sale of JEA, which uncovered and eventually helped end an unethical and secretive government push to privatize Florida's largest municipal utility. In sports column writing daily circulation of 100,001 plus, the winner is Jason Gay from the Wall Street Journal, who was described by a colleague as part critic, reporter, comic, storyteller, and therapist, and whose columns are almost always written on a tight deadline. In the 1 to 100,000 category, Ed Graney from Las Vegas Review Journal is this year's winner. Graney has become a voice of hope, strength, and reason, but also shows thoughtfulness and sympathy, bearing his own emotions when appropriate through his writing according to his colleague. In online column writing affiliated, the winner is John Blake from CNN for Race, Religion, and Politics that reframed conversations on race and politics in unexpected ways. In the independent category, Sabrina Shankman from Inside Climate News is the winner for her work, Fumes in South Portland. The series followed growing fears of residents in South Portland, Maine, as they tried to solve a mystery. Are fumes emanating from the storage tanks of the nearby oil port harming their kids? In research for journalism, the winners are Ariel Scheftel, Jonathan Singer, Narissa Young, and John Ackerman for a newspaper adherence to media reporting guidelines for the suicide deaths of Kate Spade and Anthony Bourdain, which was a content analysis of newspapers' use of best practices. In public service, in newspaper journalism, daily circulation 100,001 plus, the winners are Ian James, Rob O'Dell, and Mark Henley from the Arizona Republic for Arizona's Next Water Crisis. The investigation revealed how unregulated groundwater pumping is draining water supplies, drying up homeowners' wells, and harming one of the Southwest's last free-flowing rivers. 
for public service and newspaper journalism in the daily circulation 1 to 100,000 category. Kyle Hopkins from the Anchorage Daily News in partnership with ProPublica is the winner for Lawless. The investigation revealed how indigenous people in Alaska are denied public safety services and prompted the Department of Justice to declare a federal emergency. In the public service in newspaper journalism non-daily category, the winner is Connor Sheets from Alabama Media Group in partnership with ProPublica for Unchecked Power. Sheets found that after losing hard-fought re-election campaigns, Alabama sheriffs often turn their attention to undermining their successors in ways that abuse the public trust. For public service in magazine journalism with national circulation, the winners are Jessica Pels and Andrea Stanley from Cosmopolitan Magazine for their work, How to Go to Rehab, as a way to navigate getting help as more than 5 million young people suffer from addiction. In the regional local circulation category of public service and magazine journalism, the winners are Christopher Collins and Sophie Novak from the Texas Observer for Critical Condition. Collins and Novak found that in rural Texas, hospitals are closing, doctors are leaving, and towns are dying, and yet the state's legislature has done little to reverse the troubling trend. For public service and radio journalism, market one to 100, the winners are Daniel Venton, Molly Peterson, Lauren Summer, and Kat Snow from KQED Science for Living with Wildfire, California Reimagined. The series looked at what it would take for California to be able to protect people from increasingly deadly and destructive wildfires in a warming world. For public service and radio journalism in the Market 101 Plus division, the winners are Sandy Hausman and David Seidel from WVTF for their entry, Parole, Pardons, and the Fight for Reform. Houseman examined the pardon backlog and a new public outreach effort by Virginia officials as part of her work. In public service and television journalism, network, syndication, program service, the winners are Anna Werner, Wendy Cramps, Nicole Bush, and Jean Pinder from CBS News for their work on Medical Price Roulette, which exposed the lack of transparency in medical pricing in the U.S. For public service and television journalism, large market, ABC 15 Arizona is this year's winner for Abuse of Force, which exposed a corrupted culture inside a local police department that protects officers and misleads the public. In the small market category of public service and television journalism, the winners are Rhonda McBride, Will Mader, and Nick Swan from KTVA Channel 11 in Anchorage, Alaska for Dads in Yellow that focused on dads serving time, composing lullabies for their children with the help of local musicians. In the online journalism affiliated category, the winner is Rob Davis from the Oregonian Oregon Live for Polluted by Money, that looked at Oregon's no campaign finance limits and drawing a line to lax environmental regulations on polluters. For public service and online journalism in the independent category, the winners are Jay Hancock and Elizabeth Lucas from Kaiser Health News for UVA lawsuits. The work revealed that the massive University of Virginia health system has filed lawsuits against 36,000 patients seeking 106 million bankrupting or debilitating patients who stood in the way. For public service in newsletter journalism, this year's winners are the staff at ProPublica for emails that help readers stay informed about and go deeper into the news organization's journalism. For collaborative journalism, this year's winners are the University of Maryland's Howard Center for Investigative Journalism, Capital News Service, and NPR for Code Red, Baltimore's Climate Divide. The work was an investigation of the local effects of climate change in Baltimore. In fact-checking, Lori Robertson and Eugene Kiley from factcheck.org are this year's winners for Trump's Steel Industry Claims about the impact of his tariffs on the steel industry. Hello again, congratulations to all the winners. And I just wanna thank the Society of Professional Journalists for continuing to support excellence in journalism all across the country and for highlighting all the ways in which journalism is changing and evolving to meet the needs of our audiences. I wanna also thank the panel of judges for putting in the time in this busy year to adjudicate the submissions. I hope you all have a great day and see you again next year.